Here, and by the way, it, how many's ever uh, operated a uh, a vehicle that you had to shift it from one gear to the other? Man, yeah. right? Yeah. How many realizes that you can only go so fast in first gear? That's right. That's right. No matter how much gas you give, right? right? But you have to transition. Here's when I see the word transition. You have to transition out of the gear you're in. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> you have to transition out of the gear. You, and in order to do it, you have to let up on the gas. I mean, understand that. <laughs> Push in the clutch. Come on. Put it in the other gear. Release the clutch and give it the gas. Now, each, each one of those shifts. Now, notice this. You have to shift first before you can have acceleration. Right. So there's a shifting before there's an acceleration. Right? Yes. You want to go faster? You want to do more for God than you've ever done before? You're going to have to transition. You can't stay in the same gear. Which means you can't stay in the same gear in your thoughts. You can't stay in the same mindset. In fact, your mindset is the gear ratio you're in now. Right. Oh, somebody needs to hear that. Oh, yeah. Your mindset, what the way you think right now, is the gear you're operating in right now. Come on. The way you think. Yeah. And only as you transition in the revelation of the Word of God can you be able to go to into the next gear. But get this. You can't keep pushing on that gas as hard as you can thinking the way you're thinking now. Right. 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 You're going to have to yeah. let up on that gas. Yeah. Yeah. And you're going to have to say, okay, I'm going to slow down on the way I've been thinking. Amen. And I'm going to have to get in the Word. Right. And I'm going to have to transition into a new level of the revelation of God's Word. And I'm going to have to see something different yes. than the way I'm seeing it right now. Right. Yes. And the way you think will determine the way you act. Come on. And the way you act will determine what you receive and what happens in your life in the future. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So if we're going to change anything, it starts with the renewing of the mind. Amen. Amen. you got to renew your mind. And the Lord started speaking to me about living in Kairos time. Yes. That we have to not just live in chronological settings. And we as Christians try to live in chronological and we don't understand that God, when God does something, He does it by kairos. Right. And, and if you may not understand those terms now, but wait till I give a definition. Go to Acts chapter 3 with me. And we'll give the definition between the kairos and the chronos, which is chronological. Hallelujah. Go over to Acts, to Acts chapter 3. How many is ready for the Word? Amen. How many is excited about the Word? Amen. Oh, Glory to God. God's already started giving me some names and some details, so we're going to start prophesying here in a little bit. And uh, we're going to be ministering to some individuals because the Lord's already speaking. Isn't that wonderful? Hallelujah. i just got to get your faith in a certain area. Amen. Amen. I, just, I have to help you transition. You need to transition with me. We're going to do it together, right? Amen. And so when we look in Acts chapter 3, look at verse 19. And I want to show you this as, as we begin to go through this. 19 through 21. I'm going to read through it and I'm going to come back and dissect it. 19. Repent ye therefore. Now the word repent means to change your mind. You'll never change actions till you change your thoughts. That's right. Thoughts produce actions. That's right. The way someone thinks will determine how they act. Amen. So repentance. See, we thought repentance was, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You know, right. weeping and stopping all over yourself. <laughs> no, that's just your emotions. That's, right. that's not repentance. Right. Repentance means to change your mind and therefore change your direction, right? Mm -hmm. So it starts with changing your mind. That's repentance. Repent you therefore and be converted. The word converted means change. Now he knows that if, if you repent, there will be a conversion. If you, if you right. change your mind, there's going to be a conversion. That's right. 
you're going to begin to, to do differently. Amen. And as you think differently and do differently, you will be different. That's Amen. right. Amen? Amen. Amen. And then it said, be converted that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing. Now the first times here is the word kairos. Okay? That the times of refreshing. Someone say reviving. Reviving. It also means the word revival. Yes. Refreshing also means revival. Shall come from the presence of the Lord. Now I want to stop. There can never be lasting revival till there is the changing of the mind. Amen. Well, somebody needs to hear this. Amen. Repentance, right? Yeah, that's right. Repentance is a prerequisite for revival. But the repentance is the changing of your thinking. Amen. You have to think differently. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> Times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. And he shall send Jesus Christ, which before was preached unto you, whom the heaven must receive until the times, now this is chronological or chronos, until the, the, the times, the chronos of restitution of all things which God has spoken by the mouth of his holy prophets since the world began. Now it's interesting, he starts off by speaking about Kairos first. I thought that was very interesting. And if you, if you respond to the Kairos correctly, in fact, tomorrow night, I want to talk to you about perceiving your Kairos. Okay. If you don't perceive your Kairos, you will not receive the blessing of the Kairos. Okay. And we're going to share with you tonight what can come because of Kairos. Okay? So here we have, we have the Kairos, and let me tell you what Kairos is. Kairos is it really it talks about times and seasons, but Kairos means an occasion. <coughs> a short duration of great opportunity. An occasion, a due season. When it happens, in other words, when something happens. Kairos is when something happens. Amen. Kairos is when get, hear this, hear this. Kairos is when your healing arrives. Amen. Yeah. Lord. Amen. Kairos is when the check is in the mail. <laughs> Kairos is when your restoration of your family takes place. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. See, Kairos, I want you to see this. All manifestations of God operates in Kairos. That's right. Yeah. Amen. Isn't that wonderful? Yes. Yes. We want Kairos. Yes. 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 I said, we got to have it. Because without a Kairos, you get nothing. Right. Amen. Because the Kairos, I want you to see the Kairos as an opening, a prophetic opening, a prophetic time that the heavens open and the blessings fall on you. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Isn't that right? Yes. And he starts off, in order to even have that, he said, repent. Amen. Change the way you think. Yes. Right. Amen. Come on. Change the way you think. You cannot receive beyond the way you think right now. Right. You cannot grow spiritually beyond the way you think right now. Right. And if you're satisfied with what you have now, you will never go further. Right. That's right. That's right. Some of you need a little bit of holy dissatisfaction. <laughs> Some of you need to experience what Elisha experienced when he wanted that mantle. He had his own mantle. His mantle meant clothing. He had his own coat. But he wanted that other coat so bad, he ripped his own coat. <laughs> saying, yesterday was okay, but yesterday's not enough. I'm thankful for what I have. I've got to have more. And if you're satisfied with where you are, you will never progress beyond where you are. Come on. Sit, sit. Stay right there. Some people get so proud of themselves and where they've been. But I'm thinking, man, you could have ten times that. Exactly. Right. 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 You could have twenty times that. Is there really any limit? No. Your own thinking is the only thing that limits you. That's it. Right there. Wow. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Come on, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. 
Yeah. Yes. Yes. Wow. yes. Both success and failure came by thought. Right. That's right. right. Those who receive a miracle and those who cannot, both of them, it was based on their thinking. Right. Amen. Wow. Amen. That's good. That's good. Amen. Jesus. That's good. <laughs> One who prospers and one who doesn't, still based on thinking. Right. One who's used by God and one who isn't, still based on thinking. Well, oh, somebody needs to get over it. Somebody needs to let this get deep in your heart. Let it transform you. He said, let it transform you. <laughs> and when your mind changes, revival comes. That's right. There's an outpouring. The presence of God. Look, the Shekinah glory of God will come on you. Bring your mind changes. You want a fresh move of God? Have some fresh, fresh thinking. Come on, have some fresh meditation of the Word. See something in the Word you've never seen before. Amen. So that you can have something you've never had before. Right. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, I want to tell you, every time Jesus would speak, He, listen, he waited for a Kairos time to speak. Right. Yes, right. that's true. Because the Word tells us that He only did and He only said what He saw His Father do yeah. and what He heard His Father say. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Yes. That's, right. That's, right. That's, right. That's right. That's right. So when God's doing something big yeah. and you can step with Him in step with God, right. that is Kairos time. Yeah. Yeah. Kairos. Hallelujah. Being led by the Spirit, you're operating in Kairos time. You're in, he steps and you step. Hallelujah. Come on. He zigs and you zig. He zags and you zag. He stops and you stop. He speaks and you speak. He's silent and you're silent. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Man. You never hear where Jesus ever had any failure in ministering right. to somebody. That's right. That's right. He didn't even have a misfire when he went to multiplying loaves and fishes. Come on. <laughs> there wasn't anybody he laid hands on that remained sick. That's right. That's right. Come on. That's right. That's right. He healed them all. <laughs> but the reason, but I'm going to say this: there was times he didn't lay hands on people. Right. 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 Do you remember the pool of Bethesda in John chapter five? Yep. The pool of Bethesda was the hospital of the day with five wards to it. Many people believe it was five thousand people per ward. Wow. Twenty-five to thirty thousand people were in the hospital. Wow. Jesus goes to one man. Wow. See, I hear people today. Well, if you if you were Jesus, you, you'd empty out every hospital. No, you wouldn't. No, no you wouldn't. Right. Not if the Father. <laughs> Not if the Father didn't instruct you. Right. Not if you didn't see it in a vision or hear it by a word. Come on. Right. That's it. He went to one man, and only one man out of the whole hospital was right. healed that day. Right. You know why? Because he was is instructed by Cairo. Oh, somebody. Yes. Amen. Yes. Yes. He, he stepped into a Kairos moment yes. and followed the will of the Father right. and the movement of the Spirit. That's it. That's it. Ooh, hallelujah. Mm, glory to God. Let that get in your heart. Go to Mark 1, Mark chapter 1, verse 14. I tell you, there's going to be some transformation in our lives. How many believe that? Yeah. Yeah. We will not be the same after these meetings. It's because of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. That's because of Him. Amen. Yes, Lord. Yes, uh, Lord. Now, in, in Mark chapter 1, look at verse 14 and 15. Now, after that, 
John was put in prison. Jesus came into Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God and saying, the time is fulfilled. And the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. Now when he said the word time here, he meant the kairos. Right. The word there is kairos. In other words, he saw, a, he saw a kairos that was complete. He saw a kairos in its fullness. Wow. And he began to speak about it. And he began to talk about the kingdom of God. Amen. Is at hand. Mm -hmm. Repent. Well, here's the word repent again. Yeah. Change your thinking. Right. And believe the gospel. Yes. Yeah. Change your thinking and believe. Now, can I, can I just say this to you? The gospel is the good news. Yeah. That's right. yeah. So I want to say this to you right now. If you're not believing good news, you're not believing the gospel. That's right. That's right. That's right. That. Somebody needs to take hold of this. So what do you believe in? you got to change your thinking. Right. Repent and get some good news going on in your mind. Come on. Right? Yeah. <laughs> and I want to say this too. Any end time preaching that doesn't wind up with good news is not the gospel. I'm going to say it again. Any end time teaching or preaching that doesn't wind up with good news out of your mouth about it is not the gospel. Amen? Hallelujah. So whatever you're teaching and preaching, is it to good news? If it's not, repent. Think differently. Speak differently. Jesus would speak according to Kairos and in the Kairos time. Woo, hallelujah. What if we would wait to say something when we knew God wanted us to say it? What would happen? What if we waited till... And I was reading this in the book of Ezekiel. I'm thinking it's over in the 37th chapter where God was speaking to Ezekiel about the valley of the dry bones. And He said to him, He said, God said to Ezekiel, Prophesy to the dead bones and say unto them. Right. That's Kairos. Yeah. That's Kairos. Yeah. Prophesy to the dead bones, in other words, and this is what I want you to say, and do it now. Right. Right. And every time he would say what God said for him to say, when God told him to say it, there was a shaking and a rattling and a coming together and something began to happen. Yes, come on. Yeah. Yes, that's it. Hallelujah. There's too many people saying stuff that nothing's happening. Right, right, right. And we expect God to back up what we say. But I want to say this to you right now. When you begin to look at Samuel, the Bible said that, that everything Samuel said, God performed and didn't let one word fall to the ground. Right. Do you know why? Because he waited to say a Kairos word. He waited until God said, Samuel, go over here and prophesy to the king and say to the king, thus saith the Lord. And he would, he, would, he would receive from God exactly what he was supposed to say, when he was supposed to say it, and who he was supposed to say it to. That's it, that's it. Yep. Therefore, God didn't let one of those words fall to the ground. Right. Do you know why? Because now it was God speaking. That's it. Not just a man. There's times when I, I start prophesying over somebody and I stop myself. I go, Whoa, that's a big word. I'm so glad I didn't say that. I can't make that happen. Come on. I get real bold in the middle of a service. On the way home, I'm like, what in the world did I say? <laughs> Help me, Lord. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Amen. I mean, understands what I'm talking about. <laughs> when the anointing is there and God's telling you to do something, right. that's one thing, right? right. That's true. Woo. Now, I want to show you that Jesus, He moved in, He walked in, He operated in this Kairos time. In Matthew 12, 1, I want to show you this. 
And I saw this today as I was looking at this. Now, at that time, the word time there is Kairos. At that time, Kairos, Jesus went on the Sabbath day through the corn and the disciples were hungry and began to pluck the ears of corn and to eat. And I want to show you that Jesus went. The word <laughs> at that time, look at this. At that time, Jesus went. In the Kairos, Jesus went. According to a Kairos, Jesus went. Does anyone see what I'm talking about? Yes. At the time, at the time mm -hmm. that God said that. Right. Now let me throw you another one to you. You'll see this one. Do you remember in John chapter 4 when Jesus said, I must needs go through Samaria. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And i got to be there by noon. Because right. Yeah. there's a woman at a well. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if I just, listen, if we just decide to show up at the well to do witnessing, uh -huh. right. yeah. well, somebody's going to hear me. Oh, yeah. 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 I just come up with it on my own. That I'm going to go witness at the well. At noon. I may not see anything happen. Unless I'm directed to do that. I honestly believe there's a higher level we haven't yet entered into. Some people are like, you should just run out and witness to everybody. I don't believe that. That's it. And I mean, if that upsets you, I'm sorry. I just happen to believe in Kairos. That's right. You can be at the wrong place at the wrong time and wonder why in the world you were there. Come on, somebody. Wind up with someone putting a gun in your face, and you're going to have to call on some angels. Because you came up with an idea. And I want to throw something else at you. A good idea is not necessarily a God idea. Come on, that's it. That's it. <laughs> Though a God idea is always good. Right. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Is it my idea or his? Right. Good. Amen. <laughs> See, I happen to believe that this Kairos that's being led by the Spirit should operate in everything I do. Right. Amen. And let me give you a good example of this. I, there was a man I knew that was uh, a street evangelist. He was also a pastor of a church, but he... You know, God had delivered him from alcohol and drugs. And I mean, he was, he was in a ditch, you know, literally living in the ditches, mm -hmm. homeless. And uh, he had an encounter with the Lord. Someone had witnessed to him, actually came to him at the lowest part in his life and gave him a track. And he actually accept, accepted the Lord and was delivered from alcohol and drugs mm -hmm. and later became a pastor of a church. Mm -hmm. And so he, but he still, he still had that love. Mm -hmm. But he didn't do it like most people. And I didn't know that at that time. It was many, many years ago. So I told him, because, I, I, you know, there was a time in my life that I did. I used to do street ministry two years ago, and I, I still love passing out tracts and all of that when God tells me to do it, right. how, who to do it, who to give it to, who to right. talk to. Right. But uh, anyway, I told him, I said, I'd love to go. I'd love to go with you some Saturday, because he, he would go out on the Saturdays, you know, work during the week and pastor at the church, and on, on weekends, on Saturdays, he'd go with us. I said, I'd love to go with you. He said, good. He said, uh, be here about 9 o'clock in the morning. Pretty sharp if you can. I said, okay. So I'm there on time. I walk in and he comes out of his room. He's been praying in there. And he said, Phil, he said, uh, exactly five minutes after 9, down here at, at, at the grocery store, I'm trying to remember the name, Piggly Wiggly or something down there. He said, we're going to go down there and there's a woman sitting at, on a curb and she's got her sacks of groceries there her son that was supposed to pick her up is not showing up wow. and, and she's afraid her ice cream might melt and we've got to go help her and witness to her well, I thought she had called the church right. by the way he talked he was so many details right. no she didn't call nobody right. so we get in the car we drive there exactly 5 minutes after 9 and there's the woman sitting on the curb Amen. with her sacks of groceries. Oh, we walk up and, and we say, can we help you? Well, I guess so. My son, he, I don't know where he's at. He's just not showing up. And I'm afraid my ice cream's going to melt. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> he said, well, can we help you? I guess so. I need somebody. Wow. So we took everything to her house a few blocks away. Walk in, start talking to her about the Lord, and he explains what happened. And how special she was to the Lord. Oh, and ministers to her, beloved yes, Jesus. That's right. Oh, yes. 
yes. This is what I'm talking about moving in Kairos. Yes. Yes. Moving in Kairos. Hallelujah. Being where you should be. Yes. When you should be there. Right. Yes. Because the Lord, come on, the Holy Ghost Amen. is speaking to you. But see, until you change, until you change your mind, you're not even going to seek God for that. Amen. See how you gotta change your thinking? Yes. Yes. <laughs> and actually start being sensitive. Yes. To the impressions. Oh, we're going to get into something. Yes. Yes. To the impressions that God is giving you. Yes. <laughs> and it might be simple. It might be simple. I helped that person put gas in the car. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, come on. That's it. Right? A little mama that's thinking she's going to have to put her groceries back. Right. Because her food stamps just run out. And right. She didn't know. Right. And the, the babies are needing food and they're having to put most of it back. Oh, right in front of them. You're sensitive enough to know what you're supposed to do. And then get this. And always, always tell them why you're doing it. That's right. That's right. Come on. That's true. That's it. Always tell them it's because of Jesus. Amen. Always tell them it's because of Jesus. I said, always tell them it's because of Jesus. And how much He loves them. Come on. Don't think it's our flesh that did it. Come on, somebody. Don't think it was our, the goodness of our heart. No, come on. The, the, the heart outside of God is wicked come on. and selfish. That's it. If we're generous at all, it's because Jesus lives inside of us. That's really the truth. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. That's the love of God talking. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yes. How do we begin to get something from this today? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Now I want to show you that every blessing that Jesus wants to give all of us, every blessing can only be received in Kairos. Yeah. Every blessing. Go to Mark chapter 10. I want to show you. Oh, glory to God. I hope you're getting something good out of oh, this. Amen. I hope you're letting it feed your heart. Yeah. Tomorrow night, we're going to go ten times higher. Hallelujah. Glory. Amen. I'm going to go higher. <laughs> hallelujah. Prophetic Should perception of Kairos. Oh, hallelujah. In Mark 10, look at verse 28 with me. Mark chapter 10. Let's begin with verse 28. Then Peter began to say, Lo, we have left all and followed thee. Jesus answered and said, Verily I say unto you, there hath no man that hath left houses or brethren or sister or brother or mother or wife or children or lands for my sake in the Gospels. But he shall receive a hundredfold. Look at this. Now in this time. And we look up the word time. Now in Kairos. Yes, yeah. <laughs> it's received in Kairos. Not, not chronos. Yeah. Which means, I'm going to tell you tomorrow night why that's important. You've got to perceive Kairos to receive a oh, Shabbat. You've got to perceive a Kairos in order to receive from that Kairos window. Yeah, that's it. You'll miss it. Yeah. You'll miss it. So every financial blessing is received through a Kairos window. Yeah. That's right. That's it. Everyone. How many picking up on this? Yeah. Hallelujah. He shall receive a hundredfold. Now in this Kairos, houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children and land with persecution in the world to come eternal life. <laughs> but many that are first shall be last and the last first. It comes down to who? Who understands Kairos? Will be who receives through the Kairos window. Yeah. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Did you know when, when God gives you a prophetic word, Kairos has just happened? Yes, that's true. Yes. And when and some people don't know this, at the same moment, let's say for instance tonight, I get a prophetic word for several people, which I will, but I get a prophetic word. When I start delivering the word, at that moment, there's a window in heaven that starts cracking open. It's called Kairos. Wow. There's more than just a prophetic word that comes through that. Right. There's acceleration. Come on, somebody. Yeah. There's a shift. Yeah. There is expansion. Yeah. And there's increase. Right. And I want to say this to you. There is such increase and such acceleration 
that I have seen where prophetic words were given to somebody. Maybe somebody was called to do a particular thing, but they never could quite get it kicked into gear. Mm -hmm. But after the prophet, and listen, it's so important, there's a difference between just a regular prophecy and a prophet's word. Right. It's called authority. Right. There are those who operate, listen, I believe the prophets operate in the office. Come on. Yes. Particularly the office prophet. Yes. I'm not just a prophet, I'm an office prophet. What, yes. What's the difference? Ephesians 4 and let, in verse 11. I train and equip the church in the prophetic. Yes. Amen. The fivefold that trains and equips. Right. If you want to know if you're fivefold, are you training and equipping the body? Right. If you're not training and equipping the body and received by somebody, then you're not a fivefold prophet. Though you may be a prophet, but not a fivefold prophet. Right. Amen. That's, right. Right. That's, right. That's, right. That's it. And when you're called as a five-fold prophet, there is a level of authority. Yes, there is. Right. So that when something is spoken, it carries a higher weight, a higher mantle, a higher glory, a higher manifestation. Glory. So that there's great acceleration. And what would have taken you, even though you were called to do something great, what would have taken you 20 years when an office prophet rises up and begins to decree what God has said through the Kairos window, what would take 20 years will now take five. Right. Amen. That's it. That's it. What would have taken five will now take one. Or somebody needs to take hold of this. It's the power of this Kairos time, this Kairos moment. Who's spoken to them by the prophets? Who have they taken hold of this? Yes, Lord. Yes. Now, I want to show you about the times and seasons of the Kairos. In Ecclesiastes, many of you know this verse in Ecclesiastes 3 1. Where it tells us that, that, that He makes all things beautiful in His time. Now His time is what? Now even though in the Hebrew it's a different word, it has the same meaning. Right. It has the same meaning as the Greek word kairos. To everything, look at this, there is a season. Has anyone seen this? To everything there is a season and a time. Yes. To every purpose under heaven. Yeah. Right. In other words, there can't be a thing without a season and a time. Right. Oh, wow. That's right. There can't be a healing without a season and a time. There can't be a deliverance without a season and a time. There can't be prosperity without a season and a time. There can't be acceleration in your life without a season and a time. There can't be destiny without a season and a time. Ooh. And then we're said this, verse 11. He had made everything beautiful in His... So great beauty is in His kairos. Come on. Even though that's a, that's a Hebrew word that's different than kairos, it still has the same meaning. So if you want something beautiful to happen in your life... You need God's timing. Right. Amen. Amen. You need to step into His time. And what's so beautiful is on, on Sunday, I want to show you how, I want to show you how to per, not only perceive your Kairos, but get this, how to accelerate those Kairos moments in your life. Right. How to see more Kairos moments happen in your life. Yeah. And I'm going to show you from the Word how to do that. Yes. So every one of these services is going to build on the service tonight. Come on. Yes. Whew, until our life's going to be totally transformed. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Now go to Genesis 8.22. I want you to see this real quick. I want to show you something here in Genesis chapter 8. Because this actually is the, it's the law of Genesis. Genesis 8.22. But it mentions something about time here. So we want to see it. We want to see it. In Genesis 8, look at verse 22. While the earth remaineth, that means as long as there's an earth. Is there still an earth? Yes. Yeah. Okay. While the earth remaineth, seed, time, and harvest, and coal and heat, and summer and winter, and day and night shall not cease. In other words, there's going to be a time to plant, yeah, that's Ecclesiastes 3, and a time to reap. That's right. Yes. Right. Yes. Yes. Now get this. 
What if I'm trying to reap when I should have been moving in a season of planting? Yeah. In other words, it's possible for me to do the wrong thing at the wrong, wrong time. That's right. That's right. It's kind of like Gideon trying to thrash wheat in a wine press. Right. Okay. Right. Come on. Right. How many of those it don't work? Right. And it doesn't work to do that. <laughs> if he's inside the wine press, and see what you have to do, you have to get on top of a hill and have a threshing floor in which you throw that wheat up so that the chaff, the wind will blow right. and blow the chaff out and the wheat that's heavier will fall down. Right. Because if you get rid of, if you have chaff, if you have to, if you go ahead and make bread with chaff, there's toxins that will make you sick. Yeah. Wow. How many understand this? Yeah. So he's inside of a wine press and it's really tall. The wine press was tall. So he's throwing this up but no wind is catching it. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Wow. So it's falling back down on him, yeah. <laughs> and he's making bread that's poisonous. Right. Wow. So you've got to do the right thing yeah. at the right uh, time, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> People are wanting. Listen, we want to receive the right thing, but we're doing the wrong thing at the wrong time. Right. So with Kairos, and I'm gonna, I want to say this to you. I want to just lay this out. Your Kairos time is your general time. It's like your 24-hour time. That's, that, that's your, I'm sorry, that's Kronos. Kronos right. is chronological. Right. So your Kronos is your general time, all time. Then you have Kairos, which is those little windows that we wait for. Yes. Where the miracles come through. That's right. Uh-huh. Waiting for the troubling of the water in John chapter 5. Yes. That whoever jumped in, particularly the first one, right, would be healed. Now through Jesus, when the water's troubled, whoever gets in. I have been in meetings where God sent angels in to trouble the healing waters. And the place was just full of healing angels. And anyone who perceived it and got in at that Kairos moment was healed. I've been in meetings where we saw 100% healing. Yes. Everybody heal of whatever they have. Yes. Hallelujah. Some of you look at me real funny, but we've been in meetings like that. I believe that. Hallelujah. Yes. And many of them, 80 to 90 yes. percent. Hallelujah. And we're talking about people testifying to it. Not us, them. Glory to God. Because you have to understand Kairos. If we don't understand Kairos, we really won't receive much from God. Amen. We really won't. You know, you've heard the story of the guy <coughs> that during a flood, you know, he got on top of his house and he was up there praying during the flood, saying, Lord, I'm asking you to, you know, come and, and rescue me. Come rescue me, Lord. Come rescue me. In just a little bit, somebody come along with a rowboat. And say, get in, man. He said, no, no, no. God's going to rescue me. So he paddles over. And a little bit, someone comes with a motorboat, bigger boat. Get in, man. No, no, no. God's going to rescue me. He goes on by. Finally, a helicopter comes. And he says, no, man. God's going to rescue me. All of a sudden, the water goes higher. The white guy winds up drowning. So the story goes, he winds up in heaven. And he says, God, I was asking you to save me. I, uh, why didn't you save me? He said, why didn't I save you? I sent three different people. Come on. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> you missed every opportunity. Come on. Because it didn't, here it is, it didn't come in the package you thought it would. That's it. I've had people look at me and go, eh, he ain't got nothing. And you know what? I can't even do anything for him. I've had other people look at me and go, that, that man has something inside of him. I see it by the Spirit of God. And I'm going to pull it right out of him. And when they do, guess what? What's what God put in me, not what I had. What God put in me starts coming out, and I'm more shocked than there. I'm like, whoa! Hallelujah! Signs, wonders, and miracles start happening. Glory to God. Amen. How many got the message? Amen. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. That was the message.